Hey everyone, it's Chris at Lime Punch Forge. I recently made a couple of sterling silver feathers. Both of them look super awesome, and I used two different procedures in order to make them to kind of figure out which way is best. Turns out the first one is the best. The second one, uh, not so great. So what happened was, first one, I'll get close up here. Not clean yet, but nice. Nice, good thing to work from. Solder lines are, are perfect. It's got good texturing. Um, this is gonna be bent over as a bale and then soldered to the backside. Um, this one, same thing. Looks really nice. It's got good solder lines. It's got good texture. But the problem is, on the back, it looks like it probably got overworked a little bit. Let's focus on him. Oh, hi, there we are. We got a little bit of a crack there. So there's one of a couple things that we can do. That looks like a hole, but it's not. It's just nasty stuff. A couple things we can do to fix that. One, first thing, I'm going to try and add a little bit of solder to see if I can assist that because on the opposite side of that crack, there's also a small crack in the stem part of the feather right there so if I solder that there's a good chance I can get the solder to flow down into that other crack and then I can just sand and polish it out and I you shouldn't be able to see it in theory so what I'm going to do is do that first and then secondarily if it doesn't work I'm going to end up soldering a piece onto the back of that one to stabilize it and two to add a little bit of an element to kind of hide what's going on there. So stay with me. We'll do that. And before we get started, remind you, this little guy right down here, that red one, he likes to be pushed. So I wanted to let everyone know that we made it to 500 subscribers. We are over 500 now. And if you remember, there's a 500 subscriber giveaway where there's a, I'm gonna pretend like I'm holding a coin here, but oh, let's go get the coin. That's right here. Come here, coin. Where are we at? There we are. Here we go. Got the coin. It hasn't been polished yet, but yeah, dragon coin. This is going to be our 500 subscriber giveaway. We've already made it to 500, so I'm just adding a little bit of time on there, and people add a comment onto that video and tell me something they want to see videos made for. I just filmed a crystal hunting video today. It's going to be a real short one. A uh, little teaser of, of rock hounding season so you guys can kind of see what's going on. But for now, soldering. Soldering these guys. And uh, yeah, well, let's do this. All right, so this is my good one. I want to put him aside so I don't actually schlop him with the torch. Get schmoo all over him. I don't want that. So I'm going to find the right type of solder. I soldered the back, the uh, stem on with, uh, I believe I used hard, hard solder. So I want to try and use medium on that. I don't want to melt the hard solder. I don't want to uh, hurt that anyway. And there it is. There's my medium. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of scuff up that area a little bit. Clean it out. You can kind of see the crack. I get the light just right. So we're going to try and fill that. And then you can see the crack on the back. So one thing I'm going to try and do is grab my flux. I'm going to paint the back of it with flux because I want the solder to flow there. And then I'm going to put flux right along that area there. Now, it's a possibility that the solder that I put onto this will flow down into the crack. So in order to do that, I'm going to try and heat from underneath because solder will follow the heat. And if I put the solder on top and heat from the bottom, there's a good chance I can pull that solder down into that crack successfully hiding my mistake. So here we are with the medium solder. Let me move this out of the way. We're going to take a good little 
fella here. And put him right on there. And then I'm going to take a little smaller piece and put it right on the other side. Just because I want to try and pull that solder down into the crack. Alright, there we go. So those two are set. Next, I'm going to light up my torch to a neutral flame. Remember, you'll, I'll try and get the, this on video, neutral flame-wise. E lighter. Where's my lighter? This is what happens. I lose my stuff. I, all over the place. I had it in one place, and then I went to another place, and... Oh, well, let's do this. All right, so there we go. That is not a neutral flame, but I'm gonna make my acetylene until I get a nice feather at the end, so it's feathery, and then I'm gonna turn on my oxygen and bring and reduce that down into a neutral flame. Right there, I have a nice blue. Let's see if I can focus that on the torch, maybe. Trying to burn my hand. Prudence, don't watch. What I've done here though is I've taken the flame and I've brought it so that the kind of orangey disappears into a blue. You really can't see it that well on video, but yeah, believe me, it's blue. So what that does is creates a neutral flame. And then I'm just gonna slowly heat that up. You're gonna see the flux bubble up, turn frothy, and then get hard. It's gonna foam up white. I'm just heating the entire piece kind of evenly in a nice circular fashion. Not really touching the flame to anything. What I want to try and do is dry out that solder first. So that way my solder that's, or excuse me, dry out my flux first so my solder's not bouncing around. That flux has a way of having the uh, solder bounce around. See, there it goes. You see the uh, nice white. And I'm just going to try and keep my flame moving. That part up to temp. Should almost be there. There we go. And now I'm just gonna try and pull that solder down into crack. The solder will follow the heat, so that's one reason why I'm, I'm doing this. I want to try and evenly heat that and get that where I need it. So we will quench, put it in my pickle. Remember, perfectly placed pickle pots. Pickling is important for clean metal. Proper Pickling procedures. Practice proper pickling procedures in your perfectly placed pickle pot. We'll wash off the pickle and take a look at what we have. We, looks like we may have uh, successfully pulled that solder down into that crack. Try and, the only way to really tell is get a little bit of a uh, little sanding on it. So let me grab a Let's do a scotch pad first. Mm, I can still get my finger on it. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna do one more piece of solder on that crack to see whether or not that works. And if that doesn't work, then we are placing a decorative piece of something on that to stabilize it and call it good. Here's my medium. There it is. I have all these different tweezers and that kind of stuff and I can never find the one I want when I want it. Alright, so we have a little guy. Oop, I dropped him. A little fella somewhere in here. That'll work. Come here. There we go. I'm going to place him right on that. And I'm going to see if I can get him to flow down into that. Now, like I said, flowing down in, I'm going to pull that solder down down 
pull it down into that leaf better looks the same this is probably hot but I'm touching it anyway and then I'm going to heat from the underneath to pull it down Ow. watch out prudence all right let's do this oh. there we go all right feathery no soot oxygen to a neutral flame dry it out heat up see the flux bubbling heat from underneath Glassy, it's gonna flow in a minute. Mm, it looks like we're gonna be hiding the crack. So that didn't look, that didn't go so well. So we're going to do a different procedure where we make something and then put it in. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Solder video turned into a forging video. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take this piece of sterling and we're going to forge it into a leaf of some sort to solder onto the back and then wrap around the front of the feather. So it'll solder in two places. But what I need to do is I need to forge this into a leaf. And I'm trying to see if I could find my gauge to see what gauge this is. Looks like it's six gauge half round. So what we're gonna do is, like I said, this is a needle. I'm gonna find my cross peen hammer. And I'm gonna find my other cross peen hammer. And what I'm gonna do is probably round that out with a file first. Soft metal does not like to be filed. Okay. Now that I have that kind of smoothed out and filed, I'm going to look at the back of the leaf where I'm going to dry that off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and match that up. Maybe something like that. And then I'll forge a leaf and wrap it around. But in order for that to happen, I need to have this area meet this area. So in order to do that, I need to make an indentation. I could file that out, but I like to forge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take cross bean put this next to it and drop my stuff put that next to it I've got my rounded off edge I think I want to wrap it around the, the left side to the right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my marker so now I'm gonna take him and this is gonna be the the front side so I'm gonna mark the back side Hammer. Take my other hammer and use it as a force. It should start to get there. So I'm really close to meeting that now. All I need to do is bend this part out so that it meets it. And I have a semi matching. Area. What I am going to do those take this and bend it up and around. I may need to flatten this part of the feather out a little bit, and then that's where my seam is going to be. So that doesn't look bad. I, that's got plenty of plenty of air for me to work. So I'm going to take my other cross pane and I'm going to bend the metal up like this. In doing that, it's going to when I hammer right here, it's going to force this to come up and around. So, so now it's a little bit more curved. And that's what I want. So we got a little bit more curve. Some of that can be fixed with a little bit of bending. And then 
we have a darn near perfect joint for me to join that up. There'll be a little hand fitting afterwards. But what I'm gonna do now is we're half round right now and I don't want that to look funky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start rounding it. And I do that by rolling it. I have to be careful with half round wire because this has a tendency to fold over and cold shut. I wanna leave this area pretty much untouched. So I'm just trying to get that a little bit more rounded out, a little thinner. Remember cross pane? I strike, it moves this direction. Here, I move all directions because your striking area is here. Strike goes down, metal moves everywhere. Striking area is here. Metal moves this way and moves this way. So, depending on what you want to do, you know what side of the hammer to use. So, I'm going to elongate this. And now I'm smoothing it, making it a little bit more better. I said more better. Drawing it out, meaning that I hammer and force the metal into a longer piece than I began with. So this is getting thinner in here, but in order for it to get thinner, I'm also I'm pushing it outwards. And then I'm leaving this area so that I can eventually form a leaf, forge a leaf into there. So I'm almost to the point where I need to anneal. I want to crack my metal again. I think that was the case on the leaf to begin with. I did too much forming without annealing. Let's anneal. All right, here we are annealed. I'm gonna use a slightly smaller hammer. This is gonna allow me to direct my blows a little bit more accurately so that I can pull that metal out where I want. All right, so getting close and rolling it around so that I can keep the shape relatively organic. And this is the exact same thing you do blacksmithing. Only you do it cold, blacksmithing you do it hot. So you're just making your own elements by forming metal cold. is taking out some of those cross beam marks but in doing so I'm elongating using the side of my anvil to force the metal where I want to force it bring down those shoulders your anvil is a tool a lot of uses and this just the block of uh, 4041 4140 steel and it's not hardened okay I'm gonna anneal the next operation is going to be me kind of texturing this out a little bit with another hammer um, probably either this fella or I think I like this one. This is a old finish that is on here. Um, it's pitted, but it makes a really awesome finish for stuff like that. So let me anneal this and I'll be back. Okay, we're annealed. So 
what I have now is I have the curved area that's going to go on the back of the feather over that and I'll need to do a little bit of working on that to kind of curve it around a little bit more just give a little bit of a little bit of love flatten some of those areas out and now that's not quite right so as I'm hammering I'm lifting with this hand that's going to allow me to hammer and draw this up into a U shape, keeping downward pressure on that in order for that to happen. That does not look too bad. I've got that thinned out where I want it. Now I'm gonna texture it and thin it out just a little bit more. My phone's ringing. I'll be back. In the back. I'm just continuing to round this. Any sharp edges I see from hammer marks, I'm going to try and round those off so that they look a little bit more natural. All right, now we're going to make the leaf part. In order to do that, I want to try and you can do a couple different ways. You can file this to a point and then do your hammering or you can forge it to a point and for this let's see what this is going to do no oh, it's going just equal sides try and forge that down to a point Now that I got it there, just because of the shape of the wire, I'm not going to be able to get it super pointy. And I'm feeling lazy. So I'm going to file that a little bit more to a point. Getting there. Okay. So we have an okay point on there. That'll be fine. Next thing we want to do is make the shoulders for the leaf. And that's going to be where the stem terminates into the leaf so in order to do that make sure I got the right end yeah I do that's gonna happen right here so I need to define those leaf shoulders and in order to do that I use the side of my anvil and you can use cross pin Make sure you also define the top portion. Basically, defining your working area for the leaf. I'm going to use a uh, ball peen real fast to kind of round that out, and then I will anneal. All right, I'm going to anneal, and we'll come back. All right, here's the fun part. We're gonna flatten it, make a leaf. So now that I have that defined pattern, kind of in a, you know, a gentle leaf, if I flatten that using the flat part of the hammer, the round side, I'm gonna spread it all in the same direction. So I'm gonna lay that on the anvil and I'm just gonna give it a whack. And since it's already in a portion shape of the leaf, it starts to make a leaf. And now in order to spread that out, I'm gonna hammer in the center with a smaller hammer and I'm gonna fan out. So if I hammer this way, the metal is gonna move this just like that. And that's what I wanna do in order to spread that leaf out. So center line. And then just start fanning. You can actually define your tip too. And then we are going 
to now once that's done we're going to refine it with a little bit of file work and an engraver but first wheel and needle all right I'm in back I wanted to find my shoulders a little bit more A little bit of cleanup and cut in a little bit with maybe a round file. Where'd he go? Okay, that's not him. He's probably on my bench right in front of me. Just gonna round out that shoulder and we'll do a finish on him. Okay, there's our leaf. And I'll engrave that in a little bit and fit it to the feather and then I will come back when it's time to solder so but that's basically it I've got to do some fine fitting on the on the back side here for that looks like I've got to remove maybe a little bit of material and uh, but it, it looks really nice it, that's gonna work out really well and then what I'm gonna end up doing is bending the leaf portion around into the flower or excuse me feather and down into the leaf so that the engraved side shows out so it's wrapped around but yeah cool that'll work and welcome back